brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin.
prayers for forgiveness and healing before the Blessed Sacrament. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are before our Lord who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, truly and physically, after each prayer, let us allow the words to sink into our hearts. Heavenly Father, I come before you with an open heart to receive your graces, to forgive those who have hurt me deeply. May you heal me and give me the strength to be more like you at all times. Forgive me for the times when I have taken your love and mercy for granted. Heavenly Father, you know my needs, and you feel my pain, trials, and helplessness. Be my strength and my hope, so that I can forgive as you forgive, and find the peace of seeing and loving you in every person daily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us begin with our guided contemplation of the Gospels. To familiarize with the Gospel text for our contemplation, I will now read the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 to 30, in which Jesus proclaims about, Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus exclaimed, 
I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I will now highlight a few aspects of the gospel that we just heard proclaimed to help us have a better understanding and appreciation of God's word and also to prepare our hearts for our guided contemplation prayer. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks of the importance of having a heart that is sincere and receptive to God's revelation of the truth of salvation. The knowledge of God's truth is not solely reserved to those who are scholars and religious leaders like the scribes and the Pharisees. In fact, the innocent and pure in heart like children who are more transparent and sincere in their relationship with God and are closer and more intimate in their relationship with Him, will receive greater light, love and wisdom of God's truth of salvation. These so-called religious experts offend and denounce God through the misuse of their privileged positions, power and authority when they load unbearable burdens on innocent and helpless believers. And so Jesus, with compassion and love, invites those who are truly and sincerely seeking for the truth of salvation, as symbolized by the image of children who also represent the poor, needy and marginalized of the religious and secular communities. And so Jesus proclaims, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. This invitation, Jesus as the Son of God, whose union with the Father and who thus possess the fullness of truth and eternal salvation, assures that all who accept his gospel will enjoy the gift of freedom, peace, love, and joy of living in God's presence and compassionate love. They will no longer be burdened with the pain of the yoke of having to fulfill the rigid, rigorous and meaningless religious rules and regulations of the scribes and the Pharisees. My sisters and brothers in Christ, when Jesus assures that those of us who believe and follow him as his disciples will enjoy the rest of our souls, Jesus was not proclaiming that believers do not need to be vigilant in the practice of our faith. No, Jesus is affirming that in our acceptance and obedience to the gospel, we will have the deep peace and assurance that there will ultimately be the eternal rest of being with God in His glory and happiness. We also know that to live our faith with great single-minded fidelity is possible only with God's graces, light and love. On our own, 
we are humanly too weak to face the temptations that lure us away from God. So let us pray for the wisdom to live our faith with greater sincerity, humility and commitment to the gospel of salvation that Jesus has proclaimed to us. And if we are truly able to live our faith with greater fidelity for God's greater glory, we can then be assured that we will experience the great joy, happiness and fulfillment of loving God and deepening our relationship with Jesus in all situations of our lives. Let us bring these truths of the gospel into our contemplation prayer and allow them to seep into our hearts to experience the mercy and compassion of Jesus more deeply. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm aware that those of you who have been following this series regularly would by now be familiar with the pointers that I give before the contemplation. However, for the benefit of those who are new and are still not yet familiar with this gospel contemplation form of prayer, please bear with me for a minute or so at different sections for me to give these people some brief pointers. Thank you for your patience and understanding. So my sisters and brothers in Christ, before we enter into the guided contemplation prayer, may I ask you to please switch off your mobile phones and set up a conducive ambience for your prayer. Please also note that as I guide you along during the contemplation, follow me only if you find what I say to be helpful to your prayer. But if the Holy Spirit is guiding you in some personal way that is different from what I say, then simply ignore what I'm saying. Please note too that there will be moments of silence which are deliberate. These moments are very important parts of the contemplation. They are to give you sacred space to listen to and feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however this may be. And if you wish to have more details of the structure of this gospel contemplation and also listen to the introduction of this series, please click on the link at the bottom of this video under Show More. Thank you. And so, my sisters and brothers in Christ, having prepared ourselves to familiarize with the gospel text that we are to contemplate on, we can now begin our contemplation. Let us begin by composing ourselves. And so, please switch off your mobile phones, close your eyes, and sit upright and focus your attention on your nostrils. Become aware of your breathing. The air that is entering your nostrils and giving you life. Every breath you take is God's precious gift of life to you. Be grateful to God for the gift of life.
for as soon as we stop breathing, we will die. God is present within your heart and loving you personally and intimately. Get in touch with God's infinite love within you and thank the Lord for everything. Prayer to pray for the graces we need for our contemplation. Heavenly Father, we pray that during this contemplation, you would enlighten us and give us the wisdom of your Son to love and serve you with greater sincerity and fidelity at all times. Imagine yourself at the scene where you are with Jesus and his disciples in the early and cool morning of the day. As you look at the sun rising and ponder on the beauty of nature, Then one of the disciples asked Jesus about the many religious observances expected of them by the religious authorities. Jesus looks at all of you and feels much compassion and love for you. Jesus then says, My Father has revealed His truth and salvation not to the learned but to mere children and those who are humble and sincere in living the truth of salvation. You ponder on your need to live your faith with sincerity 
and humility. Jesus adds, the scribes and Pharisees have introduced so many rigid laws and religious regulations and caused heavy burdens on believers. So come to me, all you who are overburdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. You ponder on Jesus' invitation for you to surrender the way you live your faith daily. And in times of trials, and place them in His hands and trust Him more fully. And you feel Jesus' consoling gentleness and peace in your heart. Jesus then says, My yoke is easy and my burden light. You are further consoled of how Jesus never fails to show his caring and loving ways to you 
in all your needs and the desires of your heart. you also find great joy of knowing that your most precious blessing in your present life is to have Jesus loving and caring for you. You thank Jesus for loving you so much and for everything he has done for you and your loved ones. Become conscious that you are in your room where you are praying. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open your eyes now. My brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us that soon after our contemplative prayer, we are to do a review of our prayer experiences. This review only needs to take some five minutes or so. The purpose of this review of prayer is to recall and relish what happened during your prayer. So during your review, please focus on getting in touch with your inner feelings during the contemplation and then be able to describe your experiences. As such, click the pause button now 
close your eyes and spend the next few minutes making a review of your contemplation prayer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with this guided contemplation form of prayer and would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, then please click the link below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you will soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit that will lead you to encounter Jesus in a very personal way through the contemplation. Take one patient step at a time and God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experiences of Him in ways that you have never experienced before. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for the next two minutes, I would like to introduce you to a four lines gospel reflection that I write daily to help you connect your life to God in very real and realistic ways. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe you and I desire to live a more wholesome and fulfilling life. This means that you and I need to get to know Jesus more personally and his gospel more clearly. For this, I have written a four lines reflection on the gospel daily for you. This can be downloaded into your smartphone iPhones and Android phones without any charge under the acronym DGEMS D-G-E-M-S Here is a sample of what you will find on your apps in today's DGEMS message when you sign up. This gospel message will help create a greater awareness of God's presence and blessings in the challenges and experiences of your daily living, whether they are hectic or routine. In fact, there are other helpful spiritual materials on these apps too, like my Sunday homilies, which you could explore. You have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. Thank you for your attention and God bless you. Thank you for your attention. We shall now move on to the next part of our session, which is the benediction.
you have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who lives and reigns forever and ever. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in our last episode, we reflected on the true story of how Veronica, in her marriage crisis, was battling with her husband who was physically abusing her and her young children, and who was also a womanizer, alcoholic, and gambler. Eventually, for the safety of the family, as they were in danger of being killed by her husband, she divorced him. Throughout her agonizing and traumatic experiences of her marriage, Veronica drew strength from God and believed strongly that God will never fail her. We clarified that while citing Veronica's agonies in her marriage and how she was able to find strength in God, the story is not to advocate divorce in troubled marriages. In this true story, we emphasize how Veronica was going through great emotional desolation, darkness and depression. Yet, she had the wisdom to appeal to God, which is the spiritual and the deepest level of her being, of her needs. In doing so, she was able to go beyond her emotional desolation and found the spiritual consolations of God's merciful love and strength in her great agonies. If Veronica was not firmly rooted in her spiritual strength in God, her emotional pain and darkness would have weakened her will to trust God. And she would have been easily deceived by the bad or evil spirit who would certainly create doubts that God is merciful. And if she were to fall into such traps of the evil and bad spirits, she would have been drawn into a greater darkness that would have overwhelmed her. And indeed, she would have been choked and crushed 
by the double darkness of her emotional and spiritual desolations. And as such, an agonizing and unbearable state, the family, in all probability, spiraled deeper into the dark abyss that would have led to violence, destruction, and other evil that will destroy the whole family and her relationship with God. What chance of survival do you think would Veronica have if she did not turn to God? Happily, we know that Veronica's deep faith and trust in God saved her and her children. In short, in Veronica's deep emotional desolation, she turned to the deepest reality of her being, which is her spiritual reality, where God was then able to give her the needed strength to break free from her emotional darkness. When Jesus was in his deepest agonies at the Garden of Gethsemane, he also appealed and drew strength from his Father and prayed, Father, if possible, remove this cup, referring to the suffering that was to come upon him. Jesus then added, But let your will be done, not mine. My sisters and brothers in Christ, it is good to note that if we want to live a more discerning life, then there are certain areas and aspects of our lives that you and I could reflect on and confront with courage and humility. We need courage because many of us do not wish to face the real truth of ourselves and choose only to see what we want to see within our comfort zones, and as such, are blinded by our own prejudices and biases. We also need the virtue of humility to see and accept not only the good and the virtues we have, but also face the shadows and sins as part of the real truth of ourselves. For this, I believe we will become clearer about ourselves if we try to see and understand ourselves from the perspective of Jesus. We can tell ourselves, Jesus knows everything about me and we cannot hide anything from him. So what does he see in me that I should know about myself so that I can live a more discerning life. When we have a clearer and more authentic view and understanding of ourselves, we would also become more aware of the common strategies of the evil and bad spirits who want to tempt, deceive and manipulate us in such a way that will lead us away from God and weaken and destroy our relationship with Him. However, because we can so easily deceive ourselves and justify our wrongs and refuse to see our need to change our attitudes and behaviour for the better, we have to be conscious that we are also often vulnerable to the influences of the bad and evil spirits within our hearts. As such, in order to break free from such influences and domination of the bad and evil spirits that are intent on drawing us away from God, you and I are called to be ever more conscious and more aligned to how God wants us to live our lives and love Him and others. For this, with God's graces, we must be strongly resolved to continue to live a vigilant life of being attuned to God's good spirit that are present within our hearts. Take the not uncommon case and happenings in families. Joyce is getting increasingly impatient and angry 
because she has to attend to the needs of her 90-year-old mother who is sickly. One of the main reasons for Joyce feeling this way is because her other three siblings are not willing to care for the mother. While it is understandable that Joyce is upset with her other siblings' uncaring and non-filial attitudes, Joyce is becoming increasingly more vulnerable to the temptations of the bad and evil spirits who will take advantage of her impatience and anger. If Joyce is not careful, the bad and evil spirit will take advantage of her vulnerable emotional desolations, like her impatience and anger and tempt her to get upset also with God. If Joyce is not a discerning person, she would fall into the traps of the bad and evil spirit who would use her basic frustrations and anger with her siblings to eventually cause her to have problems in her relationship with her mother and eventually also with God. This then would be the double desolations of joy's emotional desolation causing the deeper spiritual desolation of her relationship with God. This then is when Joyce may begin to blame God for all her anxieties and anger in her life. When in fact, the fundamental problem is with her siblings and not so much in her relationship with her mother and with God. However, if Joyce is living a vigilant faith where she is very conscious of the strategies of the bad and evil spirits, which is taking advantage of her emotional weaknesses, then in spite of her painful emotional challenges of having to make much sacrifices to care for her aged mother, Joyce will be able to see and appreciate how her mother had made so much sacrifices in bringing every one of them in the family up with so much care and love. And that it is only right that in her old age, she as a daughter would go beyond her emotional trials and desolation and continue to care for her mother's needs. Better still, like Veronica, if Joyce is able to see Jesus in her mother and then love and care for her mother because of her love for Jesus, then the emotional challenges would be transformed into meaningful challenges and eventually even into spiritual consolations of love for Jesus through her love and care for her mother. My sisters and brothers in Christ, one of the signs that we are living under the influence of the good spirit of God is when we are not insisting on strict and cold justice. As in the case of Joyce in her relationships with her siblings. But when we are able to ask and pray for the grace to be able to accept such situations of injustice with compassion and forgiving love that Jesus has shown us. Indeed, we should pray for such Christ-like qualities are graces when we find ourselves being hurt and treated unjustly by people. In order to live a more discerning life, we also need to have the wisdom of God's Spirit to see the bigger picture of our lives and the abundant blessings that God has given us and how God continues to be there for us in spite of the many pains and trials we are facing. This is so important because one of the most common and complex aspects of living a more discerning life is to fall into the traps and temptations of our emotional 
desolation, where we want to turn away from the pain, trials, and tribulations of our lives, as in the true story of Veronica. While shunning from pains and trials are very understandable, you and I are also called to be more fully aware of such pitfalls, traps, and temptations that the bad and evil spirits commonly use to draw us away from God and destroy the peace that God gives us in our lives. However, if we are aligned with the good spirits of God, the state of our being is different. Like Veronica in our stories, in confronting the emotional desolation and darkness of our lives, we are able to remain firm and strong in our faith, hope and love for God and not allow the bad and evil spirit to take advantage of our emotional weaknesses and then tempt and draw us away from our relationship with God. But on the contrary, when we are firm in our faith and are rooted in God, the emotional and spiritual desolation will eventually weaken and dissipate. God's Spirit will then draw us closer to Him. And this is like experiencing the peace and the joy of the dawn where the darkness that had once dominated is giving way to the light of God in the good spirit. And when this happens, we will be drawn closer to God and the deeper peace and spiritual consolation in our hearts will return. And when that happens, we will once again become persons who sow peace and bring meaning into the lives and hearts of others. And even as in the case of Veronica and Joyce, where they have to continue to bear the responsibilities and make the daily painful sacrifices of caring for their loved ones, they will have the strength to persevere and remain faithful to God in their love for Him and continue to carry the crosses of their lives and be united to Jesus' crosses and sufferings. The positive pain and sacrifices of being in union with Jesus are spiritual consolations too, as they will strengthen and deepen the maturity of our relationship with Him. Let us note that in our Christian faith, Jesus suffered and died for the sake and salvation of all peoples. The goal of our faith and in Jesus is not to be freed from pain, but to unite with him in our love for God our Father and for his greater glory. And so, to live a more discerning life, let us next reflect on some of the common challenges of our daily living that would be good for us to be more conscious of and reflect on more deeply as these are the human aspects of our lives that the bad and evil spirits will take advantage of and draw us into the double desolations of our emotional desolation leading into our spiritual desolations. First, it is good for you and I to ask ourselves and reflect on what are my main weaknesses. In regards to our weaknesses, let us note that the strength of a chain is its weakest link, so to speak. This means that a chain may be made up of several hundred strong loops. However, if one of them is weak, the chain will soon snap when it is pulled. In other words, 
while we may pride ourselves in being a good spouse or parent or priest, but if in the secret of our hearts we have certain weaknesses that are preventing us from growing in our relationship and our love for one another and with God, then if we do not work at overcoming these weaknesses by facing the truth of ourselves, then these weaknesses, whether they may gradually be weakened and undermining our relationships, and worse still, this may even one day destroy our families, loved ones, vocation to the priesthood and our relationship with God. One way of reflecting on our weaknesses is to ask ourselves, is there any person or anything that are frequently causing me to be impatient, angry, fearful, and is draining my enthusiasm, peace and joys in my life? Could this person be my boss or colleague at work, or spouse or sibling, or child or boyfriend or girlfriend, neighbor or priest, or someone else? And if we can identify the person, then it is good to ask ourselves, why is this particular person causing me such anxieties and other negative inner feelings within me? What is it that is in the person or what is it that is within me that is making me feel this way? Is it because the person is very abusive, unjust, immoral, arrogant, manipulative and the like? Or could it be that the person is making me feel insecure about myself because he is more talented, more intelligent, more popular than I am and even a better priest than I am and he is overshadowing my own efforts to be successful and priest? Or could it be that deep within my heart, I wish I have his qualities but do not have them? Or I dislike the person and want to give up helping him because he does not praise me enough and the like? If these are some of the reasons causing my emotional desolation, then it is clear that I should reflect on my own insecurities, envy and jealousy that is causing me all the emotional desolations. And so, if this is the case, then we should stop blaming others for the negative feelings that we are going through, let alone blame God for them. And pray for the grace of humility to accept my own limitations and then see the many graces and blessings that God has given me in such great abundance. Second good question to reflect on and ask ourselves is, what are my fears in life? Each of us have different fears, and fears are often related to our insecurities and what Jesus is offering is the divine peace in our hearts, where God become our greatest security and freedom to live and love as God wills of us. And so, when we don't have the peace of Christ, we would have the greatest tendency to live in the fear of losing our reputation and self-image. For such a person, he would be over-conscious of himself and would be subconsciously asking himself, what do people think of me? Such fears are often associated with our vanity, attachment to our self-glory and the like. Some good indications that we have fears is that we are consciously living in anxieties, 
impatience, rigidly, authoritatively, rarely praise and rejoice in the good and success of others and the like. The list and symptoms and signs of fears we have is endless. But we should also expect that the bad and evil spirit too would surely have unlimited options to play up our emotions and eventually destroy the peace in our lives and also easily keep our relationship with God superficial, superstitious, scrupulous and basically lead us to distant God, to distrust God rather, that he will abandon us and the like. The good spirit, on the other hand, would want to draw us closer to God. He would want to always give us assurances that God can be trusted. And his love and mercy for us is infinite and unconditional. The good spirit's assurances are deeper than our fears. But we must pray for the wisdom and light to continue to open our minds and hearts to allow the good spirit to deepen our love for God and not be tempted and weakened when fears threaten us. We must pray to trust that nothing can overpower and destroy us even though the storm may be raging around us and threatening our lives externally. However, in faith, even though Jesus may be asleep in the boat of the storm, the fact that Jesus is present, regardless of how fierce and threatening the waves may be, the storm remains powerless. And so, if our faith is strong enough, with God's graces, then no fears can drown us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as I conclude and sum up, let us remind ourselves then that one of the main challenges of living a more discerning life is to be vigilant in attending to the emotional desolations of our inner feelings and affirming of the spiritual consolations of God's presence within us. And who will never fail to give us the needed strength and wisdom to live in His love, will and ways. We also highlighted that to live a more discerning life, it is also very important that we become more conscious of our weaknesses and fears in our lives. These are aspects and realities in our lives that the bad and evil spirit can manipulate and create the state of the double desolations where the bad and evil spirits can use the vulnerability of our emotional desolations and lead us into our spiritual desolation where we find our relationship with God. In other words, when we are emotionally down and hurting, or even feeling fearful, insecure, envious, and unjustly treated, these emotional desolation can very easily be used and manipulated by the bad and evil spirit to draw us away from God and weaken and confuse our relationship with God. And to overcome such temptations and ways of the bad and evil spirit, we are to hold firmly to our faith in God, who will never fail us. And in doing so, vigilantly, the peace and consolation of God will return, as in the case of Veronica and Joyce in our stories. And so we have come to the end of our episode today and we look forward to having you join us in our next episode 31. Thank you 
and God bless you. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray in thanksgiving for your protection, for your providence, your love and your care in all the situations of our lives. You have never failed us. May we continue to experience your loving presence and to draw upon the wisdom of the gospel that your Son has proclaimed as we kneel before our Lord Jesus Christ present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, physically and truly, through his inspiration, light and strength, we pray that we will continue to be faithful to your will with greater generosity of heart, as we say. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing I do your most holy will. Amen. So